Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to write balanced molecular, complete ionic, and net ionic equations. And uh, let's get into this. So <clears throat> here we have one example where uh, you're given uh, two reactants in uh, words. So they're not giving you the formulas. So you need to know how to go from the names of the substances to the formulas. So I'm gonna go over that uh, as well. Um, in addition to that, you're gonna to need to figure out <clears throat> how to get the products. And most of the time, uh, this is they're gonna be double displacement reactions or single displacement reactions where you can figure out what the products are possibly going to be. And I'll go over that as well. Um, and also you're going to need to figure out whether or not you have a precipitate. So you're going to need your, um, your solubility chart or solubility rules. So maybe something like, like this sheet here. So you'll have solubility rules. Um, so you should have that handy as well. So <clears throat> let's get into this. So here we have iron three chloride with sodium hydroxide. So we need to know what the ions are. We need to know the formulas for the ions and we need to know the charges. So, uh, so for iron chloride, so you've got to remember that the name of the ionic substance gives you the ions. And uh, from there, you can figure out the charges and figure out the formula. So we have iron three and we have chloride. So iron three is the positive ion. That's the first ion. Second ion is the chloride ion. So iron three, the Roman numeral tells you the charge. It doesn't tell you how many iron atoms you have in your compound. It tells you only the charge. So here we have iron and it has a three plus charge. Chloride ion, that's chlorine. And we need to know that this has a negative charge. How do I know that's a negative charge? It's because this is a group seven element. It's a halogen. And uh, that tells me it has a negative one charge. Well, how do I know that? Well, there's two ways. One, you, there's the rule that if you're in groups uh, 8A to 5A or the other way, 5A to 8A, if you're a main group element, in any of those groups, then it's the group number minus eight. So this is uh, chlorine in group seven. Seven minus eight is negative one. If you are in group 5A, then five minus eight gives you negative three. So any element in group 5A would tend to give you a, uh, a negative three uh, ion. Um, so that's one way to do it. The uh, better way to do it is just to understand like what's going on with the atom itself. So if you remember, the group number tells you the number of valence electrons and the valence electrons, uh, well, the atoms want to get the full outer shell of valence electrons. And normally that's going to be eight valence electrons. So chlorine is in group seven, therefore it has seven valence electrons. It just needs one more electron to be like a noble gas. And so it's going to gain that electron. And so since electrons are negative, that one electron being added is going to make this have a negative one charge. So that's going to be negative one. Okay. So now that we have the ions and their charges, we can figure out the formula by balancing the charge. So since this is a three plus charge and this is a negative one, I'm going to need three negative ones to balance the positive three. So I'm going to need three of these. Another way to do it is to figure is to do the crisscross method. So since I have a three here, I can bring that down as a subscript there. And since I have a one here, I can bring that down and that'll be a one there. So it'll be F E C L three. When you do the crisscross method though, uh, one of the caveats or things you need to watch out for is make sure that the subscripts are in their lowest whole number ratio. So this is one to three, so it doesn't get any simpler than that. But if you had like a two to six uh, or, or a three to nine or something like that, you can't keep it in that ratio. You have to simplify it. So two to six would be simplified to one to three. So watch out for that. 
Um, but this is one to three, so that's already completely simplified. Okay, so here I have my first product, my first reactant. Now what about my second one? So here, same thing, sodium Na, that's in group one. So again, I can think about it in terms of the uh, rule, right? So again, if you are in groups uh, 1A to 3A, the number of the group you're in is equal to the positive charge you're going to have. So that only applies to 1A to 3A. So since sodium is in group 1A, that means it's going to have a positive one charge. Uh, the other way to do about it, think about it, and the better way, I think, is to understand like what's going on with the atom itself and think about the valence electrons. So the valence electrons for sodium is going to be one because it's in group one. So it's easy for sodium to lose that one electron so it could have a full outer shell. And, but in doing so, it loses that negative one charge. And so now you don't have a balance of your protons and your electrons. So you're missing an electron. So that means you have one more positive proton than you do electrons. And so that's what gives you the positive one. So that's the better way to think about it. If you can remember that, then that's good. But the other rule works as well. Uh, we don't really have a rule for the middle group, number 4A, because it's smack in the middle. So it could go either way. And so we usually don't talk about uh, the middle group. Um, so we have sodium and the hydroxide ion. That's, that's a polyatomic ion. This is an ion that you're just going to have to memorize. So if it's a polyatomic ion, your teacher has probably already told you, you got a, like a list of these ions to know. You just got to memorize them. I do have a video on uh, how to memorize and look for patterns in polyatomic ions. So you might want to go to that video. Um, but I'm not going to go over that here. So um, OH minus is your hydroxide ion. And so since it's a plus one, negative one, you can see that I only need one each to balance the charge. So it's going to be NaCl. And again, you could do the crisscross method again. So if this is a one and this is a one, this crisscross is over here. As a subscript, so you get one to one. We don't write the one subscripts. Uh, we just keep it as Na and Cl. Having the Na there is one, and having the Cl there is one. So that's why we don't write the subscripts. Okay, so now that we have our uh, our reactants, now we need to figure out the uh, products, and we also need to write the uh, the state that it's in. So this is where our solubility table comes in. So <clears throat> when you look on your solubility table, you'll notice that chloride ion or chloride substances are in, are usually soluble uh, in water. Uh, so it's going to be aqueous, except for a few exceptions. So those exceptions would be like silver, lead two ion, or your uh, mercury one ion. Okay, so, but we have iron here, so that's not one of the exceptions. So this is going to be soluble, so it's going to be aqueous. Okay, uh, your sodium chloride, again, we have uh, chlor. oops, I have a chloride there. Why didn't you guys tell me? Okay, so where's my eraser? <clears throat> I, I said hydroxide, but I wrote chloride. That's not good, so... OH, there we go, there we go. So here I have my sodium hydroxide. So we would look up hydroxides in your solubility table. And when you look that up, you'll see that it says that hydroxides are insoluble mainly, um, except that if you have a, uh, well, metal hydroxides are insoluble, uh, except if you have a group one metal or like a heavier, uh, group two metal like strontium and calcium and so on. Um, so here we have group one metal. So this is not insoluble. It's going to be soluble. So that's going to be aqueous. So aqueous. There we go. So now we have uh, our substances and now we're going to make our product. So our possible product. So whenever you have two uh, ionic substances, that's a dead giveaway 
that you have a double displacement reaction. And so whenever you have a double displacement reaction, uh, the way you figure out your products is that you put the inside ions together, right? So the chloride ion and the sodium ion are going to go together. And then your outside ions are going to go together. Your iron three and your hydroxide are going to go together. And you put those together, balance the charge to get the formula, and then you got your products. So if I take my iron and my hydroxide, I know that iron has a three plus charge. Hydroxide has a negative one charge. So I need three hydroxides. So that's going to be FeOH3. Notice that I'm putting the hydroxide in parentheses. Whenever you have more than one polyatomic ion, you got to put it in parentheses. And then the number of that ion goes on the outside. And then you got sodium and chloride goes together. So that's going to be NaCl one to one. And once again, uh, notice that I have the sodium written first. Positive ions are always written, written first. And so now I need to balance this. So I need to make sure that this is balanced. So I have Fe1, 1. one. Sodium, I have one. I have one. Chloride ion, I have three. But I only have one over here. So I'm going to have to put a three there. And so sodiums are going to have to change. Um, so I'm going to have to put a three there for the sodium. And then I have three hydroxide and then I have three hydroxide. So that's balanced. The next thing I need to figure out is, um, do I get a precipitate? So again, I need to go to my solubility rules to find out if I have a precipitate. So uh, again, hydroxides, we looked at hydroxides. Hydroxides are insoluble. Metal hydroxides are insoluble unless it's a group one metal or a heavier group two metal, but we have a transition metal. So this is insoluble. So that's going to be a solid. And then again, chlorides, this are going to be uh, soluble unless you've got uh, silver or mercury or lead. Uh, so we don't have that. So this is going to be aqueous. So there's our balanced equation. So now we have all everything that we need. So this is our balanced molecular equation. And again, uh, we call this a molecular equation because uh, we're writing everything in molecules. But uh, the ionic substances are, are really not together if you're in aqueous. So these ions are really not together, but we're writing them as if they are together as like as if it's a molecule. So we call it molecular balanced equation. Um, so now to write the complete uh, ionic equation, all we're going to do is separate the ions that are aqueous. So in reality, these substances that are aqueous, the ions are not together. So we're going to separate those out and keep the <clears throat> keep it balanced. So if I write my iron, so I have one iron. So the way we do this is we write iron three plus. We write the ion by itself with the charge and we put aqueous. So notice we don't write the charges here when we write it as a molecule, like as if it's a molecule. Um, but when we separate the ions, then we write the charge and we write the state as well. So I have one iron, one iron plus I have three chlorides. So I'm going to write three as a as a coefficient. So when you have the three there, when you have the subscript three for your ion, then that becomes a uh, coefficient three. So because again, the ions, these three ions are not together. They're, they're not bonded together three together. So we write the three coefficient here to in, indicate that um, the ions, the three ions are actually separated from each other, but we have three of them. So we have uh, three chloride ion aqueous plus, and then the same thing here, the th we have three sodiums, three hydroxides. So we'll distribute that through there. So we have Na plus aqueous plus 
OH minus, and we have three of those. Aqueous. So here's all of the ions separated. So we've taken our two reactants, aqueous reactants, and separated them into their ions. And now we'll do the same for the products. So this is a solid. So anything that's a solid, liquid, or gas in your, in your uh, formula, in your reaction, is not going to be separated. Uh, only aqueous substances are going to be separated. And only aqueous substances that are ionic, right? So uh, a molecular substance that's aqueous, meaning dissolved in water, is not going to fall apart. So if I have sugar dissolved in water, that would be represented as aqueous, but we're not going to separate out the atoms because it's a molecule, not an ionic substance. Okay, so here we have FeOH3 solid and then we're going to separate these guys here so we have three na plus aqueous plus three chloride minus aqueous so here's our complete net our complete ionic equation still balanced because we all we we took what we have here and we just put it into separate ions so it should be balanced since we didn't change anything. And then finally, we want our uh, uh, net ionic equation. So this is the complete ionic equation. And so what about the net ionic equation? So net ionic equation means that something's been removed. So if you have like, say, for example, if you have a job and you get a paycheck, you have your gross pay and then you have your net pay. The net pay is when you remove taxes. So after taxes are removed, that's your net pay your, or your take-home pay, right? So here, the net ionic equation is what is uh, left over from after we removed something. And what we, were, we are removing are called the, uh, the spectator ions. And what are spectator ions? Spectator ions are the ions that are not doing anything. So just like uh, spectators at a sporting event, they're sitting in the bleachers, they're watching the game. They're not participating in the game. Same thing with spectator ions. They are just floating around doing nothing. So if you have ions as reactants that are in aqueous, they're just floating around doing nothing. If you have ions over here that are aqueous, they're floating around doing nothing. So you can think of this as, as uh, uh, ions that are aqueous on both sides they don't change, uh, those are going to be your spectator ions. Another way to look at it is if I look at the ions who uh, formed my product, a solid, liquid, or gas, um, if I look here at my solid that formed, the ions that participate in making that solid are obviously the players that are reacting. Uh, anything that's not in the solid are going to be your spectator ions. So that's a couple of different ways to not notice what your spectator ions are or identify them. So here we'll see that we have three chloride ions on this side in the aqueous uh, state. And we have three chloride ions over here in the aqueous state. So there's no change here. So that's a spectator ion. And the same thing with sodium. We have three sodium aqueous ions here and we have three sodium aqueous ions here so no change so they're not doing anything and then you'll notice that both the iron and the hydroxide end up in the solid so there's a change there so they're going from aqueous to solid so that is part of the reaction so that's our net ionic equation so all we do after we remove the uh, spectator ions, we just write what's left over. So we have Fe3 plus aqueous plus uh, three hydroxide OH minus aqueous. And that's going to go and form your iron three hydroxide solid. And there you go. This is our net ionic equation right there. 
And so that's how you write your balanced molecular equation, your, your complete ionic equation, and your net ionic equation. So I hope this is helpful. If you enjoyed this video and if you got a lot of help from it, please make sure you like the video, hit that button, and uh, put a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think and if you have any other questions. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me some help. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.